is going on guys? Ben checking in. Welcome to Mint, where we bring nursing to you. So today, we're gonna be talking about diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA in five minutes. So if you're ready, I'm ready, let's go. Hello guys, welcome to this video. Today we will talk about diabetic ketoacidosis or DKA in five minutes. There are five hallmark signs that characterize DKA. They are hyperglycemia, ketosis, acidosis, dehydration, and electrolyte imbalance. But first, let's talk about the pathophysiology of DKA. Normally, we have glucose in our bloodstream. Now, our cells need glucose to function properly and to get energy. Now, for this to happen, our glucose needs to get transported from the bloodstream into the cell. And this is made possible by the insulin that is secreted in the pancreas. It binds to glucose, which allows the transport of glucose into the cell. Once the glucose is in the cell, then we have energy. So that's normal. In diabetic ketoacidosis, there's not enough insulin or there is no production of insulin at all. So the transport of the glucose into the cell does not occur. This results in elevated blood glucose and because glucose is unable to enter the cells, there is no energy. To make things worse, the body will try to compensate by taking glucose from the liver and transporting it into our bloodstream. This happens because the cells are hungry. Because there is no energy, it thinks that the body does not have enough glucose. So now the body is still hungry for energy. So what it will do is that it will break down fats and convert it into energy. Now these energies are used by the cells. But in the process of breaking down fats and converting them into energy, the body produces ketones. And these ketones get stuck in our bloodstream. Now this is what's causing our ketosis. Now let's talk about the clinical manifestations of diabetic ketoacidosis. Now these signs and symptoms occur because of these three occurrences. We have the cellular starvation or the cells are hungry. We have the increase of blood sugar in the bloodstream and the presence of ketones in the bloodstream. First is the altered mental status. Because the glucose are not able to get in our cells, our brain cells are deprived of glucose and energy which causes altered mental status. Some patients become lethargic and drowsy. Now, another thing is weakness. Our muscle cells are also glucose deprived, which causes weakness. Now, another symptom is polyphagia or hunger. Now, because our cells are glucose deprived, our cells will send signals that we are hungry. Another symptom is polyuria. This is the body's compensation to get rid of the excess glucose and ketones in the system. Now, here's the thing about polyuria. We're not only urinating the excess glucose and ketones, but at the same time, when we have excessive urination, we're excreting the potassium and other electrolytes in our system. So this causes electrolyte imbalance. The next is polydipsia or excessive thirst. Now this occurs because of the polyuria. We are urinating too much, which causes dehydration. Again, the brain will send signals that we are dehydrated. Thus, the body will say that you are thirsty. Another symptom is the metabolic acidosis. Now, the body becomes acidosis because of the presence of ketones. Now, too much of these ketones are very toxic. That's why the body becomes acidotic. So a lot of patients, you'll see that their pH is less than 7.35. Now, another compensation of our body to get rid of the excess ketones in the system is through small breathing or small respiration. So this is what's causing the fruity breath smell and rapid respiration. You're gonna remember all of these clinical manifestations by thinking of those three occurrences. The hungry cell, the presence of glucose in the bloodstream, and the presence of ketones. Now let's talk about how to care for a patient that has diabetic ketoacidosis. Now, there are three things that we have to focus on for a patient that has diabetic ketoacidosis. Number one is hydration. So when a patient comes into our ER and you see the signs and symptoms of diabetic ketoacidosis, you're going to establish an IV and hydrate with fluids right away. Initially, it's going to start with NS or half NS, depending on what the doctor orders. Now, once the blood sugar is near 250, 
switch the fluids to dextrose to prevent rapid drop in sugar, which may lead to cerebral edema. So the next priority is the electrolyte correction. Once the labs are there, you have to correct potassium if it's low. Now, if the pH is less than 7, then some doctors would order bicarb. Remember, the presence of ketones makes our body acidotic. So lastly is the insulin administration. So the doctor will probably order insulin drip for a patient. So the very important thing as nurses, what you have to do when a patient is an insulin drip is to monitor blood sugar level. To summarize the care for a patient that has DKA, we have hydration, electrolyte correction, and insulin administration. And that's it. Well, that is it for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe button. By doing this, our videos will go straight to you. Make sure you guys click on that notification bell so you guys get updated when we upload new videos. And by the way, guys, we're almost at 50,000 subscribers. So yes, we're gonna do a 50,000 subscribers giveaway. So we're gonna be choosing one lucky winner, and that winner will get the NCLEX RN medication flashcard. We're actually thinking of adding one more item besides this, so we'll keep you guys updated. So please help us get to 50,000 subscribers. So once again, thank you for supporting this channel. My name is Ben and Mint, signing out.